Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time I've pulled out 25 absolutely stunning covers from my vintage door book collection. Now I've been through the first 500 or so and I've just pulled out a few of my favourites that I thought really jumped off the cover and uh, I think are worthy of a, a little bit more closer look. So I do hope you enjoy looking through these great, great jackets as much as I do. So sit back, relax and let's take a look. Okay then, so I think I've got these all in publication order here, and we're starting off with door books number two. Now, my general way of pulling out these 25 books was I just went through my door books collection. I've got most of the first 500 now. There's not too many that I'm missing. And I just pulled out the ones which sort of appealed to me and sort of had the most sort of eye appeal straight off the bat. Now, in a lot of cases, door books actually yellow. Yeah, um, Josh Kirby door books do actually credit the cover artist which not a lot of publishers do do so I think that was really cool and um, well they did use uh, some of the absolute all-time classic science fiction and fantasy cover artists and Josh Kirby's certainly no stranger to that genre there um, this one I mean we're not going to talk about the actual books themselves but um, this really does have that air of intrigue doesn't it with the uh, the, gu the the giant lying down there it reminded me a bit of Gulliver's Travels uh, to be honest sometimes they have um, an accompanying illustration inside usually like this one has but usually they're not by the cover artist at all um, so yeah really really nice from that 1971 it was uh, as I said door books number two so quite an early one in their run Next, we got this one at number 21, uh, Dinosaur Beach. Another really, really great cover. I thought a little bit psychedelic in a, in a funny sort of way. It was not quite clearly defined, the images on there. Let's see who this artist is by. Kelly Freas. Yeah, so once again, another artist who's done a lot for Dwarf. This is one of those funny ones, just early ones, where they've got... Um, Adverts for cigarettes <laughs> on the inside, which is, uh, although I think those are menthol cigarettes, but still cigarettes, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, I think that's a really, really nice one, Dinosaur Beach. And, uh, it's not the detail there. It's just a lot going on. And it's sort of, it's got that slight, psych, like, slightly psychedelic sort of look to it, which is, uh, I, I really, really like. We're trying to get three of these side by side. So if you wanted to look while we're talking about the latest one, you can. Here's number 22, The Return of the Time Machine. So uh, the sequel to, uh, or a, one of the sequels to uh, the classic HG Wells. And once again, I really, really like this one. Um, it's got lots of different elements. There is um, this artist's um, depiction of the time machine. Um, let's have a little, a little look. Carol Thole. So not that familiar a name to me. Door Books Discovery. Hmm. Egon Friedel. Once again, not a name that I'm that familiar with, but um, this one's a, a, a British import. It's got the 30 pence sticker on. Just a nice, uh, nice jacket, that one. 25 here. John Jakes, an author I like. Mention my name in Atlantis. Now, it's quite funny and this is something that i did notice and it's just a theory but um around this time of course door books had started taking over publishing the gore books by john norman and as you know a lot of the gore books have um, an enslaved woman some uh, some sort of woman in 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 chains and then some heroic guy maybe fighting over her um, on the cover a lot of the, the books are like that and i think there's a fair case to be made that for anything vaguely similar um door books as a publisher tried to sort of muscle in on that similar sort of um that customer who might be interested in a gore book shall we say and that's i think what's going on here um, so we've got the woman who is actually chained up naked of course you know obviously she's lost all her clothes somehow in battle um, <laughs> um the cover by hj brook brook hj brook frontispiece by jack gorn so don't go much on that but the uh, the cover itself by uh hj brook is actually quite quite nice quite a lot going on there uh, which is what appeals to me um i always remember if i would go into town and i buy 
an old paperback um or yeah an old paperback or even something brand new um if it had a lot going on in the cover or on the covers um i'd absolutely love it and um that's the case with this there's a lot going on and i would read you know i remember on, on the bus back home i would pull the book out and i'd read literally every little bit about the book without starting it if you know what i mean so i'd study the covers intently read the back blurb read everything read all the copyright information then i'd finally get into the book so <laughs> okay all 35 here um, and i did it was funny but i did end up pulling out far more from the first hundred and then only a smattering from two to five hundred so um it may well be that we could probably get another 25 um great great covers in the future um so here is number 35 and well what is going on here and i guess maybe that's the that's the point you know it's 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 got the air of intrigue hasn't it um really really quite something baphomet's meteor pierre barbet yeah there's a lot sort of happening there isn't there cover painting Carol Thol okay well we've seen that author before that painter before um yeah yeah pretty pretty good I don't know why I think maybe the uh the ram here is reminding me a little bit of altered states um but yeah great jacket great jacket um so Paul Van Herk where were you last Pluter day number 51 once again quite a bit going on here and um I love it I absolutely love this one it's really of its time. And this is uh, sort of like 19, I think probably onto 1973 maybe now. Yeah, 1973. Oh, Carol Thole again. So we're seeing that same illustrator. I think that's really nice. I like that one. It's good stuff. 82 here. The Telsey Toy. James Schmitz. You've sort of seen this before where there's like a giant pulling up something and, and you get the, the big close up of like the giant's head or eye. I mean, that's what this is going on here. It reminds me a little bit of King Kong as well, but it's done really, really well. If you imagine that on the shelf, I think it would have stood out. Um, who is the illustrator? Kelly Freyas again. There we are. Good stuff. Pierre Barbel, Barbette rather, um, games, cyborgs play. Once again, this is door, you know, what's the word? Shall we say dancing with the, uh, the air of a little bit of titillation, shall we say? Um, I suppose it was just the time that these books were coming out. If you had this compared to, a, um, a Gore book, um, it would pale in comparison. Um, <laughs> and the, cover artist was george barr oh george barr there we are but i think it's really nice really really nice nice copy of that one as well actually which does make a difference some of these i've got and um there was a couple that i thought that's a beautiful cover but my particular edition is not that great nick so um i haven't included it this time round. um a quest for symbolis michael shea door 88 an epic fantasy of the dying earth Another one that really sort of appealed to me. It's really nice and vibrant. The sort of lizard creatures there look really cool. Nice amount of detail gone into that one. Now, who was this by? George Barr again. And they really do have, when you look at these door books, they do have a particular sort of look to them, don't they? The entire series. I think it's... It's great. They're very, very uniform, but also really, I just think really great. Um, this is one that um, I particularly, I haven't got a lot of door horror. They didn't publish loads, but um, I've only got a small selection of it. And this one I particularly like. And perhaps, I don't know, maybe it's not the greatest cover, but it's just a great one um, by an author I do enjoy. And uh, I don't know. It's good. Um, there's not many because they did a lot of science fiction and fantasy. I said because there's not a lot of horror and they didn't have much chance to shine. Um, but I think that's a good one. Um, this particular cover up by Tim Kirk. There we are. I think it's a nice one. I think it's really a real standout that. Borrowers Beneath. 92. Promised Land. Brian Stableford. Another absolutely superb one. This one's actually signed on the front there. Kelly Freyas. 
And uh, once again, it, this reminds me a little bit of some of the mid 70s uh, sort of Penguin science fiction ones, that, that sort of period. You know, the Alan, is it Alan Aldridge uh, designed ones? Uh, Kelly Freas here again. Yeah. Um, uh, David Pelham, was it? Yeah, David Pelham ones that he did some in the, in the 1970s. Aldridge was more Penguin in the 60s. Uh, but yeah, the David Pelham ones, it reminded me of those with very black covers and then the sort of weird sort of shapes. Um, but I like it. I like it a lot. 104, Peter Dickinson, The Weathermonger. So again, now this was another one. It's got the, uh, the sort of the castle crashing to the ground there. Um, the very, very faint sort of head there in the background in the clouds. And then super detailed man and the uh, heroine there. I think that's a really, really great jacket, that one. I just wish my copy was slightly better because it's not doing it justice. My old second-hand one here. George Barr, again. I think that's very, very nice. Now, I could have included many, many of the Gore books. In fact, virtually all of them, because they really went to town with getting great artists to do the jackets. We will have one, which I feel is perhaps my favourite Gore book in just a moment. Um, 111, Brian Stapleford, The Paradise Game. Kelly Freyas again. I think this is just a fun one. It just looked pretty cool, you know. It just, and this is the thing with the door books. They're so, on the whole, the books aren't that long. And you just want to dive in and lose yourself for a couple of hours. Barbara Carlyle uh, was the uh, dedication. But Kelly Freyas was the uh, was the cover artist. So we've seen a few of these. It's funny because I didn't check the cover artist before I pulled these out. But it's interesting that it's the same sort of artist keep turning up again and again. Stress Pattern, Neil Barrett Jr. 128, Stranger in the Strangest Land. Now this reminded me a little bit of June. I thought, well, that looks like a big sandworm there with a sort of going there in the background, the humps there. But obviously it's not a June book. Josh Kirby again was the cover artist, November 74. Fifty-one years ago, this was published. We have to put that in context, of course. I have to remember when these were actually printed. Another one which is uh, bordering on the titillation, I suppose. Uh, the jewels that bite, the claws that catch. <laughs> um, Kelly Freas again. I don't know. It's a bit of fun, that one. Um, I don't know. It is what it is, I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> it's not a bad thing. I mean, my copy's a little bit worn there. Uh, along the, the edge here and it had a sticker on so maybe a bit more would be really outstanding but it's certainly not bad it's a bit of fun Lynn Carter Master of the Adult Fantasy presents the year's best fantasy stories so door books were published the year's best science fiction and the year's best horror as anthologies each year and um, I believe this is the first of the uh, fantasy ones and um, Lynn Carter was the editor I think it's really nice it sort of sums it up it's a really nice sort of fantasy jacket it's nothing specific um, let's see who the art cover artist was George Barr on that one and who was actually in this one so you got the introduction and then yeah Mary Zibber Bradley kicks it off well, yes, it's see lots of recognisable names there. And the little appendix at the back. I think that was something that Door Books did really, really well with those anthologies. Um, they're all great. I just wish I had, um, I think I've got all the science fiction ones, the early ones. It's the horror ones that seem to be tough to find. I've got a five or six of the fantasy ones. Stuart Gordon, which is three eyes. I believe there was a one and two eyes before this. Um, I don't know, it just seems... It, it's a great little cover, this one, and it sort of um, presses a lot of the right buttons to me. If that was what you're into that day, if you're thinking of uh, like reading something along these lines, Michael Whelan, so the first time we've seen him, and uh, yeah, I just think that's a really intriguing jacket. You do sort of want to know what's going on there. Um, so yeah, that's why I pulled that one out. The Book of John Brunner, now this is number 177. Now, in the early days, door books did what they called a book of on a particular author. So it's like a book of, you know, um, Philip K. Dick. There was a book of uh, Philip Jose Farmer. And they were all this sort of style. So a single solid colour with then a circle. 
and within the circle would be an illustration. And I always remember those as being really, really great covers. However, when I had a really look at, long look at them before I pulled the books out for this video, they weren't that good, with the exception of this John Bruno one, which I think is absolutely fantastic. So you've got the astronaut in a suit of some sort, walking on a like a moon landscape of some sort, maybe, uh, or a desolate landscape with some uh, um, ships in, in in the sky there, yeah, or in the atmosphere. Jack Gorgon was the uh, cover artist to that one. And I think out of all the uh, the book offs that I uh, had a look through, that was perhaps the best looking one, you know. 196, Andre Norton, and this is uh, Perilous Dreams. Another, I think, really, really nice one. And I think we're probably going to be able to guess who the cover artist was on this without even looking. But we will just double check because we want to be for completeness, of course. George Barr again, yeah. So another artist we've seen a few times today. Similar sort of style. I think it's great. There's loads of detail in it. Look, got the, the dead bodies down there. Something spacey or something's happening there. Um, I don't know. It's pretty, pretty cool, isn't it? It does. I think that's a great, great jacket, that one. And, uh, well, that's why it's in this selection. Next, we've got 362, another Lynn Carter, um, Journey to the Underground World, The Adventures of Eric Carstairs. Now, a lot of these Eric Carstairs books had really, really fantastic jackets. Um, this one, it's, it's actually signed on the front there by Kirby. So that's obviously Josh Kirby. We'll just confirm that and also get the date. So copyright 1979, yeah, Josh Kirby. I think that's a really, really great jacket, don't you? And it's funny, but you do sort of see this slightly later period um, in Kirby's career, the start of his um, uh, Terry Pratchett jackets that he started doing in was it the, the early to mid 80s for um, Corgi in the UK for the Terry Pratchett books. This has got a lot of that in there. You can sort of see the style, um, but I like it. I like it a lot, that one. 401, Tanith Lee. Now, this is another great, great one. I thought this was a fat, stonking jacket here. Dark Destiny of the Exorcist. Pretty cool on this. A bit gothic in its, its sort of look, which, you know, they were still, although gothic as a trend had probably died off a little bit by the time this was uh, printed. There's a little hint of that going on here. Ghost Slayer. Don Knights. So not a name that we're that familiar with, but 1980, that one came out. Tanifly. Just a nice detailed jacket on that one, and uh, yeah, I think it's cool. Another Tanithly, Lycanthia, or The Children of Wolves. There we are. So this is one on uh, on werewolves. And once again, I thought this was a really, really cool, um, a cool cover, this one. So he's got the picture. Looks like maybe a mother and daughter or something, I don't know, but um, underneath you know, the picture's split and they're in wolf form. Um, it's signed Chadwick again. So whether this is the same artist, Paul Chadwick. Ah, didn't Paul Chadwick do a comic strip? Uh, wasn't it called Concrete, as I recall? Uh, would have been a few years after this, but I do recognise the name now. But yeah, I thought that was another really, really nice jacket, that one. Like like Canthia. <laughs> cool stuff. 451. I mean, without even looking, we know that this is Josh Kirby. We saw one earlier on. It's another one in the Eric Carstairs uh, series. And I guess the books were a success. They were selling really well for Lynn Carter. And they just didn't want to um, mix up the format by changing the cover artist. They've got a very particular feel and look to them exactly the same as those practices had back in the day and maybe that's why they wanted to keep them all sort of uniform but i think that's another great great jacket there by uh by josh kirby very very good now here's the one and only door book which we're going to see by john john norman and this is obviously he wrote the gore books and i think i have done separate videos on the the, the gore books because um most of the people that collect 
the gore books these days it's just for the superb jackets and they were good right around the world the british ones the american ones even the french ones which i've got a handful of are really really something now this one here it's just really outlandish ken kelly so you'll recognize him as a real big name in the world of fantasy but look at this the the scantily clad lady once again is is tied to the front of the boat across her chest there and her legs as well and then uh yeah you know, the guy on board ship i mean who knows what's going on there uh in guardsmen of of gore but blimey o'reilly what a jacket that is i mean that really is something i guess it's appealing to a particular sort of person i mean it's not none of these gore books have a full cover like these they're always like a almost like a vignette on the front there um but out of all of them i think that was perhaps the most visually stunning although all the ones that gore published are really really good they're bits of real great fantasy artwork then the 25th one that i pulled out and the last one we'll look at today is john brunner's manscape another absolutely stonking cover this i just love this one um it just just makes me want to read it straight away uh, what a great thing what's going on here you know the huge ship are they waving it goodbye uh, by the look of it or greeting it even don't really know i think it's fantastic let's see who the artist was david mattingly so not one we've seen but i think that one's really really terrific so there we go i hope you enjoyed my look through 25 really great door book covers that i just pulled out not quite at random but ones that caught my eye when i was looking through my collection recently now if you want to look through my entire run of door books numbers one to 500 and a few after that um with a, just a handful of gaps and i have pulled those all together in three separate videos and i shall link to all three of those in the end screen at the end of this video so you can just click and work your way through and look at the entire run in detail because uh, they do make an absolutely fantastic publisher to collect and i do really really love them so there we go i hope you've enjoyed looking through those 25 vintage gorgeous door books i uh, will if you want pull another 25 together of some more favorites down the line if you have enjoyed today's video do please give it that thumbs up do please hit the subscribe button if you're not already for regular vintage paperback content and I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.